What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers. Today we are unboxing the Weber Smokefire Pellet Grill. If this looks like deja vu, it's because it is. We've already done this video, but this is the second generation. It's no secret, the first uh, generation of the Weber Smokefire was a failure. There's many problems with it, but I'm excited to see if this is improved and we're gonna actually test fire it and see if the issues that happened on the first run are still in the second one, or if they fix it. You gotta stay to the end of the video to see how much this product has improved, if at all. Let's go. So like we said, this is sort of deja vu because this is the version 2.0, second generation Weber smoke fire. First of all, why the need for a second generation? Let's talk about what was wrong with the first one. What derailed this product from really taking market share from some of the bigger players like Green Mountain Grill, Traeger, things like that. And the question is, is we're gonna take it outside and fire it up, run it side by side against Traeger and uh, really see if there's extra value here um, now that they've fixed the issues. Um, and that's important. That's the reason I wanna know that is because when I originally tested this over a year ago, I thought the product had good bones. I thought it was um, well designed. But obviously, as soon as they got out into consumers' hands like yours, um, there was a ton of issues with them that needed to be fixed. And so um, once they were field tested. So now that they fixed those issues, let's see if this really is a superior product and if Weber's really onto something here. Uh, before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe. You guys gotta subscribe, thumbs up this video, it helps us out a ton. Um, so let's really get in here and show what was one of the major problems that they had at first and have, how did they fix this. So there's two sizes, there's the four and the six. Um, but one of the issues consumer complaints had was this sort of slide where your pellets would sort of feed down into your auger motor. You can see your auger motor right down there. One of the issues was, is this was too shallow. So pellets would stay stuck up here. So sometimes consumers would have to get in here and manually push the pellets downward. That's obviously a huge problem. If you're having an eight or nine hour cook, that's no good because you don't wanna stand here and babysit this thing and keep pushing the pellets down. So you can see that they've added this little slide, call it like a hopper slide. What it does is it makes this slide more vertical. So that way the pellets are gonna naturally feed down how they're supposed to. So that's definitely been fixed, you can see this. And then they also fixed uh, ones that were out in the field. So they would send you this to fix it. So my complaint with it though all along, which is many of the complaints that you guys had, was how in the heck did that get missed, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you be able to know, Elijah, if you're field testing these or, or testing these in, in some sort of R&D department, it'd be pretty obvious that your pellets aren't feeding. So I don't know how that got missed, but the important thing is that Weber fixed it. Also, they had a whole new team sort of work on this product. So the original team that, wasn't, that was on this product no longer is working on it. And they sort of had a new team fix all the issues and make it better. So that's one of the biggest complaints that we had with the original model. Obviously that's been fixed, fixed so that's no longer an issue. While we're in here, what's really cool too, see this, this is a, a pellet sensor. So this is a really nice feature because it's gonna tell us or alert us on our phone and our device, which we'll get into our software in a minute. This is gonna tell you when your pellets are low. That's a really handy little tip, very helpful. Also while we're in here, you can see this is a nice little clean out. So if you wanted to change flavors, all you gotta do is pull this guy out and your pellets are gonna drop down into a bucket or something. So that's a really nice feature. All right, what was another issue that was going on with the Weber smoke fire originally that we need to talk about. So we're gonna talk about all the issues first, how they were rectified, and then we'll talk about some of the advantage of this product overall. So let's get under the hood here. Okay, so let's get in here. You can't see it that well because it's already assembled. But see, this is where our auger feeds. This chute here, combined with what, what you can't see back in behind there, was all welded now. So it's a welded, sort of seamless, airtight piece used to be two pieces. So 
the issue they had with that is being two pieces, it allow for oxygen in there, it allow for moisture to get in there, and then that would create irregu irregularities within your temperatures. Obviously that's a problem with the pellet smoker because the best features of a pellet smoker is that it essentially works like an oven and it's gonna hold temp like a champ. So if this thing's all over the place, sort of obsoletes the idea of having a pellet smoker. Again, not sure how that got missed, but it was corrected and we're gonna test fire it and make sure it was. So that's another big thing that they did. Also, another improvement, and this is not something that you can see visually, but another complaint they had along with those irregular temperature swings, another reason that that happened was because of issues with the software and firmware. So that's more on the computer side or the software side of things. Again, it's not something that you can visually see. Again, we're gonna test this. But the idea is, is that has been fixed. So all you consumers out there that were getting error codes or massive temperature swings, you set it to 400 and it won't get above two, that's apparently been rectified. Again, we're gonna take it outside and test it. So again, that's a big improvement is the way they've updated the firmware and software on the machine itself. Now another issue that, uh, or another improvement that they worked on is, this wasn't so much an issue initially, but something, some way that they added value is you can see uh, down here, you can see here's what's called like your hot rod or your igniter down in that burn pot. But essentially they give, they give us two freebies. So the reason why this is important is because with all pellet smokers, the number one thing that I see go out is your igniter or your heating element. So these go out, it just happens with all pellet smokers, Traegers do it too all the time. So the fact that you got two freebies saves you two phone calls uh, to wait to get a warranty. It's really easy to swap in and out. The annoying thing is, is when you have to get them warrantied uh, is the time where you don't have product, well you, your product has downtime. So this saves you more so from downtime than it does so much cost because these are warrantied anyways, but you already have two handy. The other cool change that they made is you used to get one meat probe, now you get two meat probe standards. Again, this is a really small little feature, but they're adding value to the product because they're just giving you more things standard for free, which is cool. So those are the things that they either changed that, that desperately needed to be fixed, um, and then a couple things that they did to sort of add some value. So to me, after we test fire this, I'll have my final conclusion on it. Uh, we're gonna stack it again up against the Traeger to really see where they fall in the marketplace as far as this kind of product. But to me, on paper, they've done enough to make this a really cool product because again, I thought they had good bones originally. This product was well designed. Let's go over some of the cool things that made this a cool product originally. And then of course the issue sort of squashed it, but those should be fixed now. Let's go over some of the things we liked about this product from the beginning anyways. All right, let's start with the aesthetics. So I've always thought that this was a pretty sharp looking grill. Um, you know, it sort of has that trademark Weber enamel finish. And we've done this in like on our Kamados, but we'll just show you with the knife here. So you can see this thing is like totally scratch resistant. Oh, dude, you see that scratch? I'm just kidding, it didn't scratch, <laughs> I made that up. Uh, this thing's completely scratch resistant. So what's cool about that is five, 10 years down the line, if you still have this grill, it's always gonna look sharp. It's always gonna look good as new. So this enamel always cleans up very well. Um, and talking about the quality of the hardware, this grill, like almost all of Weber's products, is made here in the United States in Chicago. So to have a very durable finish, a product that's made in the United States, that's well designed, that has all the bugs worked out, you're starting to see some pretty nice added value and it's not overpriced either. It's, it's right in line with, with its competitors. Um, some other cool features that we like. I do like sort of this concealable um, ashtray. So your ash is gonna dump into here and that's really nice because it's completely concealed and hidden. You don't have, um, they say like a, a, an exposed grease tray that animals can get into or anything. That's actually a pretty nice design. Um, it is gonna be a rear draft system. So it is gonna draft off the back of this grill, which we'll show you a close up of that. But essentially this is where it's gonna exhaust. And speaking of software, which we'll talk about the app when we fire it up, but they do have kind of like Traeger super smoke mode. It's kind of a similar design where you're gonna create extra smoke 
and you're gonna stay under that 200 degree range when you really, really wanna go low and slow and heavy on the smoke. So that's a cool feature as well. All right, inside the grill, you can see with our cooking space, we took our grill gate grates out, but we have a sort of a two-tiered two system, so we get a lot of uh, real estate for cooking, which is nice. Okay, so another thing here is you can see we have the controversial flav flavorizer bars. Now, most pellet smokers, they sort of have a flat shelf all the way across to keep flame away from anything, and that smoke's gonna roll up and around that sort of smokestack or smoke shelf, I guess you could say. They're using the same flavorizer bars um, that's in their gas grills. Now, if you watch my original video, you can see where I test this and fire it up, and you do get flame coming up through this from time to time. So another complaint that uh, they had was that you would get too many flare-ups, cooking with things that are super greasy. And I do believe that to be true. One of the workarounds around that is you would use something bigger than this, but when you uh, want to avoid flare-ups, maybe over a long cook or something like that, you would get something like this, but much bigger. You can just get them at the grocery store or whatever. And you would set them over like this. So see that? Now, a lot of people say that they don't like that idea because it's just one extra thing that you have to do. Here's my trade-off on it. Here's my take on it. One of the main functions that we'll get to in this grill, and one of the coolest things about it is that it will sear. So it gets up to 600 degrees. That's hotter than Traeger. Traeger gets about 500 or so. But one of the ways that you can accomplish by getting that high heat is having the option of being near open flame. Now here's why I don't have a problem with laying something across this. Every other pellet smoker that can sear, that gets above 500, does that. So I'll show you, we'll show you a close up, but uh, Coyote is a luxury product. Um, Memphis is a luxury product. Um, both of those brands, you have the option to change out the insets where it changes it from a direct flame or it changes it to like a solid shelf that's gonna go all the way across for when you're going low and slow. So all the, the luxury pellet brands that get up to high heat do that. So really, this is almost no different. And these flavorizer bars, to me, are a trade-off for that ability to get you at 600 degrees. Um, I think it's worth the trade-off to have the flexibility to go that high, especially if you like searing. And so to me, that's sort of the long-winded version. Um, Louisiana is another one. So that smoke shelf, they have an option where you can get in there and pull it to the side, and then you cook over direct flame if you want. To me, this is no different. It is an extra step, but that's sort of the price you pay to be up above 500 degrees. That's just my take on it. We're gonna take it outside and test it to know for sure. Another thing I like, I've always liked these bars that go all the way across the lid. I think it really reinforces this lid and I think makes this lid a lot less flimsy than some of the lids out there. So I like the design. It's really, really tight right now. I think we just gotta get some oil on that and loosen it up a little bit. In fact, each time I do that, it gets looser. So that's kind of nice. But I do like the design of this. And then lastly, talking about this hopper or talking about the auger motor. You notice the, the, the auger motor points upwards and then it sort of goes down this slide into your burn pot. That has two advantages. One, this auger motor is super short, so the pellets don't have a long way to run, which means your startup times are gonna be shorter, which is nice. And the other thing, because pellets can't backfeed into there, it's gonna help with jamming, and it's also gonna help with the um, idea is when they're running horizontally, you can get uh, backdrafts or fires going in there. When that's going vertically like that, it stops that from happening. So those are the advantages. All right, enough talking. We've talked about the hardware plenty. Should we take these outside and fire them up? Yes, sir. What do you think, Elijah? Should we do it? Yep. All right, get this guy, get the Traeger. Let's get them side by side. Let's get them fired up and show you the differences between the machines. All right, so we got it filled up with pellets. So let's check this out. 
Let's see how easy this is. Looks like it's giving us a QR code. So what's cool is this is the same app that they use for their new smart grills, which we have a review on. If you guys wanna check them out. We got some new updated smart grill reviews coming, a little more in depth type stuff that we didn't do the first time, which we wanna make sure we do. All right, let's pair the device. All right, so paired super easy. We'll show you uh, manually too, so you can use this either way. It says push dial to set barbecue temperature. So we're gonna do that. And what I wanna test is getting this puppy as hot as possible. So let's set it to 600. And again, remember we had issues with temperature consistency. So we wanna see how fast it gets to 600 and if it will stay and do what it says. While it's doing that, let's fire up the Traeger. Now it's cool here, this Traeger has, we cook on this all the time. So this Traeger has a little bit of a head start because the auger is already primed with pellets. But what I wanna see is if this guy actually feeds a little faster than it should. So again, we're gonna crank this one up as hot as it goes. We're gonna ignite it. And they're off. Now what I'm looking for is if this actually does get, go a little bit faster, but again, it's not apples to apples because it doesn't have pellets filled up already. Okay, so we're eight minutes in. Check this out. Whew, Traeger's getting going. 285, so we're well within cooking level. So with the auger motor completely dry and completely empty, you'll be cooking in less than 10 minutes. You won't be searing in less than 10 minutes, but you're at, be at appropriate cooking levels in less than 10 minutes. That's impressive. Let's see what the Traeger's doing. Uh-oh, she's still igniting, which is normal. This is how long, it normally takes a good 10, 15 minutes to get your Traeger going. But I'm impressed with the speed so far. So this is what I was talking about is, even though it didn't test out well in my initial review because of the issues um, that uh, these guys had, I felt like they were onto something. I, again, I thought this machine had good bones. I'm very, very impressed with how fast this is getting up to temp. Um, and it's scalding hot, so it's working. All right, 12 minutes. So we're sub 15 minutes, we're at 600 degrees. Here's why that's awesome. That's like a gas grill. I mean, gas grill might be a touch faster, but if you need to get up above 600 degrees in under 15 minutes, you might need to think about loosening up your schedule a little bit. Just take it a little bit easy. 15 minutes is plenty, right, Elijah? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now the goal is to see how long it's going to maintain temperature. So our app told us that we're at temperature. It also told us we're low fuel. I didn't fill it up very high, so that pellet sensor was reading a little bit. But you can see it was self-feeding. I just did it a little bit to cover that pellet sensor. But this, this uh, slide was working. It was really getting down in there. So by comparison's sake, we're at 600 degrees and have been for two or three minutes. Our Traeger, we're still at 203. And again, this is normal. This is what the expectation is, is it takes 15 to 20 minutes on a pellet smoker. Well, longer than 20 minutes. I guess if you're trying to get up to 500, it takes 15 or 20 minutes to get to cooking levels. It takes about 30 minutes if you wanna be at, at 500, typically. We'll see, it might be a little faster. We were at 600 and again, sub 15. That's awesome. Okay, so as far as functionality goes, I've played around a little bit on the Connect app. The Connect app works very similar to the Traeger app. I wouldn't say one's better than the other. They both are very, very high functioning. Essentially what we can do is we can set the temperature of the grill. Our, our app will notify us when we reach temperature. Um, our app is also gonna notify us in here when our pellets are low, so we'll get an alert on our phone, which is helpful. Both grills do that. We can set the temperatures of our four meat probes, which is really cool because it's gonna tell us uh, or alert us when we reach an internal desired temperature. And again, you can adjust all of that on your phone. So that makes this a smart grill, in my opinion, is when we can control the meat probe temperature. Well, we don't control the meat probe. It, it alerts us with our meat probe temperature we can control the temperature of the grill and we get alerts when our fuel is low. So that's really helpful. The Traeger does all of that as well. I would say the one thing the Weber is gonna give you from a functionality standpoint, is we have the option for four different meat probes. With our Traeger, we only have one. 
So you can see we are going on 20 minutes and uh, we are at 330 degrees and we are holding strong at, at 600. Okay, so both grills got to temp. Uh, you can see the Traeger did take a little bit longer. Um, this guy's holding strong at 600. This guy's holding strong at 500. So you can see that uh, we're getting a higher temperature range. We got there quicker and we're getting pretty much the same functionality. And again, for a fraction of the price. So I really do think Weber's onto something here now that they've fixed these issues. I think this is a much, much improved product. And if you're in that $1,000 price range or so, uh, take a really strong look at this because in that price range, I don't know if you're gonna find a smoker that's gonna get hotter, that's also made in the United States. There's a couple out there, but Weber's definitely near the top of the list when it comes to that. Awesome product. I'm very happy with the improvements that they've made. And incidentally, if you go on Weber's website and you look at the customer reviews or the star rating that they've put on their website for this particular product, obviously with the first gen, it was failure. It was like 1.2, 1.3 stars. They're at like 4.2, 4.4 stars on these products. So from a consumer feedback standpoint, it's not just me saying that, uh, the products out in the field, the consumer satisfaction is way up. Obviously, this is our, our initial test fire. If you have extensive use with the second generation out in the field, please leave a comment below. It's gonna help our, our viewers um, and they can actually see what's actually field tested out there. Um, so leave, feel free to leave a comment, let us know what you think. But all in all, I would stack this up against any other pellet smoker in that $1,000 price range all day long. If you're in the local Colorado area, we'll include links where you can buy this. Uh, on our website or you can come into our showroom and, and purchase them here. Um, if you're not local and you need this product shipped, we'll also include links for that as well where this product can get shipped out to you. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Make sure you guys subscribe.